In this video, I'm going to explain how you can find your first blockchain job in 2020. And for that, we're going to do some reverse engineering by going from the job and going our way backward. And we're going to see all the steps that we need to go through before we find that first blockchain job. If you don't know me, I'm Julian, and this is my channel, Eat the Blocks, where I teach blockchain development. So let's start with the goal in mind. So let's say that you found your first blockchain job and you are working possibly remotely, you are working on interesting problem, your salary is pretty good, it can be $80,000, $100,000 as a blockchain developer, which is absolutely doable. So how did you get there? Well, before you had to go through an interview. So in general, there are several run of interview. The first interview in general is just to see your personality. And then you get to meet other people of the team. And at some point, you're going to have a technical interview. For the technical interview, they probably ask you two categories of questions. The first one is about how blockchain and Ethereum works. You need to have some basic understanding about blockchain. And to train yourself, you can check out this video. And the other category of question will be about Solidity, which is the programming language used for writing a smart contract. And I also have a video to prepare you for that. So before you get to this stage of the interview, you need to prepare your CV. So usually people get way too stressed about CV. They try to make them super fancy, but this is really counterproductive. Just keep it simple and concise. Don't do a CV which is several pages long. Nobody has the time to read this. Everything has to fit in one page. So for the structure of the CV, first um, at the top in a big font, I would recommend to put a title on what kind of value you can offer. So I've run a poll on Twitter, I've asked blockchain developer how they define themselves. So some define themselves as, as a smart contract developer, some say Solidity developer, some say blockchain developer. But the thing that got the most vote is full stack blockchain developer. So you might want to use uh, this title or uh, variation on it. Then for the main part of your CV, you're going to list all your professional experiences. So again, you want to be concise. So no need to put all your professional experiences, but you can just stick to the one that are really relevant. So for each of these professional experiences, what you're going to do is describe the task that you've accomplished at high level. So you don't want to necessarily give too many detail except that you can and you should mention the technology that you use so solidity web3 uh, ethereum but don't mention too many different technologies because quickly it becomes overwhelming and also it comes across as um, not very trustworthy like if you if you put like 20 different technology how do i know that you're actually good at all these technology no you should only focus on the one where you are the best and the one that are the most relevant for the position you want to apply to. So I know that some of you may not have relevant professional experience. So how can you fill that part of your CV? Well, the trick is to build personal project. So basically, you're going to build personal project and you're going to consider yourself as an employee of this personal project and you're going to describe the different tasks you had to do for this project and, and treat it as if that was a normal job basically. So it's a good idea to customize CVs depending on the kind of position that you want to target. However, you also want to balance this with the time it will take you to produce all these different CVs. So a good compromise is to have a system of templates so you should have at least two templates, one where you are focused very heavily on, a, on Solidity and smart contract and the other template where you focus more on the integration of the smart contract with the front end. And every time you apply to a position, then you choose the most relevant template and if you want, you customize it a little bit, but you already have a base so that it's much faster to customize your CV. So before your CV, the previous step is to target a specific companies. So there are different ways you can do this. So you could respond to a job advertisement for a blockchain job. So there is a website that is specialized in this that is called 
crypto job list, but you can also use some more general job board and search for specifically blockchain jobs. So for example, you have Indeed, you have AngelList, uh, you can also search for jobs on LinkedIn. You can also check out Reddit. So the subreddit is dev. At the beginning of each month, it has a thread that is called Who is Hiring? So that's also a good idea and not many people know that. You can also check out the Who is Hiring thread on Hacker News also at the beginning of each month and check out the blockchain job. You can also directly contact blockchain company without waiting for them to post some job advertisement but for that you need to know which are these blockchain companies. So one good way is to check out the projects that you like like for example uh, in, the, in the DeFi so decentralized finance. So one very famous company is MakerDAO. So if you want to have a list of different DeFi projects, you can check out this website and then you can find the different companies behind this project and spontaneously send your CV. If you want to get in touch with blockchain company, a good thing is also to go to real life events like conferences or hackathon. So I know that at the time of recording this video with the coronavirus epidemic, which is not necessarily the best time to give this advice, but hopefully we're going to solve this problem in the next few months and uh, an in-person event will resume in role and you'll be able to leverage this. So before you contact all these companies and send your CV, you need to make sure that you have a solid portfolio of blockchain project. Otherwise, they will not even take you seriously. So how can you build a good portfolio of blockchain project? Well, a good portfolio is exactly like a good wardrobe. It means that you can suit every kind of situation. So in your blockchain portfolio, it needs to cover the different use cases of blockchain. So for example, uh, you need to show that you can handle privacy on the blockchain. You need to know, you need, you need to show that um, you know a lot about DeFi or decentralized finance because a lot of blockchain companies are actually about uh, decentralized finance. So you can take some inspiration from existing DeFi project and try to do a simplified version of this for your blockchain portfolio. And in your blockchain portfolio, you should have one project that you will highlight. So that will be like you know, the project you are the most proud of, the most sophisticated one. So in my course, Adapt30, we build 30 decentralized application on the Ethereum blockchain. And one of these projects is a decentralized exchange for ERC20 tokens. So that would be a good example of a major project in your portfolio. So before you are able to build this blockchain portfolio, you need to acquire some skills. In particular, you need to be able to code Solidity smart contract. You need to be able to test them and you need to be able to integrate them with a web front end so that any user can easily interact with your smart contract. So how would you go about that? Well, most courses and tutorials, they will actually teach you these skills, but the problem is that a lot of them are outdated and they also focus too much on the theory. So Actually, if you want to go really fast and learn the skill and build your portfolio at the same time, then what I would recommend is to learn just a tiny bit and right away you try to build something simple and then you repeat the process. You, you learn a little bit more and you build something a little bit more sophisticated, etc, etc, until you have built a really nice portfolio. And the process I've described is actually exactly what we do in my course DAP30. So everything I told you in this video is just a small part of many, many other advice that I gave here on my YouTube channel for your blockchain career. And if you want to hear about all these other advice, check out this playlist.